My name's Mark Warman. I'm Darren Kirkpatrick. And we get paid to bring dead cars back to life. We work with my best friend, Royal, and my son-in-law, Josh. We search far and wide to find how a car was built, where it spent its life, and how it died. After that, we bring it back to look exactly the way it did on the day it was born. If we don't kill each other. Just shut your mouth before I actually punch you out. Can I leave a handprint on your face? So I came back across the street from getting some breakfast and Mark was rummaging through a Mopar collector's guide, uh, just looking at new vendors and you know, all that kind of cool stuff. What's up, Gomer? What are you reading? They're reproducing the valve covers. AMD is making those valve covers that we look everywhere for, these. Nice. We spent hundreds of dollars for the right ones and they're usually caved in and beat up. And uh -huh. Then all of a sudden he started asking me and quizzing me questions on uh, the Ventag. JS29V0B. Um, JS29 Sierra uh, 29 Victor 0 Bravo. Bam! JS29ROB! What is it? Yeah, you know, his hand's cocked. He's ready to crack. Chrysler has always been on the cutting edge. Chrysler has always been willing to throw out the mold and, and break away and do things their own way. And it's important for Josh to understand what I already know. Uh, the Dodge Challenger is an amazing vehicle, the new one, uh, and it's very similar to the old one. So after months and months and months of negotiation with Hadler Public Relation, who works for Chrysler, they are lending us a 2011 Dodge Challenger SRT8. I want him to be prepared for when that new one shows up. There's some comparisons, there's some amazement. JS23 UOE. His problem is he doesn't focus. Okay, V is the 446 pack. Okay. Okay, so if I tell you I have a JS29R0B, what do I have and where was it made? JS29R is a... It's very important to learn this stuff. If he doesn't learn it, he's not gonna know or appreciate the things that I do. Who am I gonna pass the torch on to, Haley? <laughs> I don't know. I just told you eight seconds ago. <laughs> You want me to pass the torch on to you? You want to run the body shop? It's a 446 pack. A Challenger. <laughs> God damn it, Mark. Cut me some freaking slack. Yes, here. one of my employees has just had a stroke. Would you please send an ambulance and a hearst? What kind of car? What engine and where was it made? I don't know where it was made. That's R is not Hamtramck, Michigan. Where is it? I don't. I don't remember. As Come soon as on. possible, please. <laughs> I think we're losing him. He's being condescending to me because I don't know these things. Give me a J. What is it? It's a Challenger. S R T. Twenty nine. S E. R. Four twenty six Hemi. Very nice. Zero. Nineteen seventy. Hamtramck, Michigan. There you have it. You know, I, I totally get what Mark's trying to do here. I do. I just don't understand why right, right now. When that Dodge Challenger rolls in here from LA, I don't want Josh to run out and jump up and down because it's black or shiny. I want him to jump up and down in amazement after all the things that I've taught him on the 1970 Challenger and say, wow, this is amazing. This is a duplicate of the original. It's a brand new season, the Graveyard Cars, and we are all very excited. We've got some really great cars that are still here from last year that we're working on finishing up, as well as considerable amount of new cars coming in. This year, we got the 71 Cuda Triple Black 4-Speed Homage to 
Phantasm car painted. And we got the 71 Dodge Charger 446 pack automatic triple green ready for final assembly. The 70 sunroof Challenger car, all of the bodywork is done and primered and blocked and ready to paint. The bolt-on pieces such as the fenders, the doors, the hood, and the deck lid, they're all pre-painted black and ready for their final coat at FC7 Plum Crazy Purple. And the 1970 Plymouth Cuda from Mark and Elena got disassembled and sent off to the Dipper in Portland. Uh, so we expect a phone call back on that at any time. And of course, we're still working on the 71 Cuda 446 barrel four speed, the uh, Phantom Cuda. And it was uh, sent off at the end of season one to the Dip Company up in Portland. And we're anxiously awaiting for its return to find out just exactly if it's worth returning and putting back together again. Uh, or if it's time to wave bye-bye to pretty much the car and, well, my career. We've got a Charger Daytona coming in from New York City. We've got a Plymouth Superbird coming in from South Carolina. A 69 and a half A12 M Code Super B coming in from New York. These cars are starting to flood in. People recognize that we are the best in the business and we're starting to show the fruit of being the best in the business. If that didn't fill my plate up enough, Josh and Alyssa decided to get married in the middle of all of it. You know, I don't feel bad. Um, I thought I was having a heart attack a couple of minutes ago. My left arm went numb. I, I lost thought for a few seconds, started mumbling some kind of gibberish. And so all I had to do was get to the shop, put my tuxedo on. You know, everybody was pretty, pretty amazed. You're welcome. So once I got dressed up in my tuxedo, uh, it was time to get back in the car and head out to Alyssa's to pick her up for the wedding. Hey. Hi. How's it going? Good. This is my daughter, Alyssa. She's beautiful today. Thanks. It's today? Good. Well, no, she always What beautiful. was wrong with yesterday? Yeah, <laughs> Looking good. Yeah. Okay. She looked beautiful. You know, she, she looked as, as stunning as you would expect one of my spawn to be. So you excited? Nervous? Yeah. You eat today? No. You gonna puke? Yes. Awesome. Let's roll. So just remind yourself that this is about me and Josh. Alyssa's immediate response, of course, is this isn't your chance to do your comedy or to showcase something or talk about whatever you do. It's about the union of two beautiful people. Oh, Mike, don't go overboard because then I know you're going to embarrass me. So we're driving back from Springfield over to Eugene where the wedding's going to be held, and Alyssa gets a phone call. Hello? You're going to have to go. We have to go to Walmart, and we have to get cups and plates, right? And it turns out that nobody thought to have plates napkins, cups, and stuff like that. This is why we did this three hours ago. Nobody had even thought about it. Well, who the hell's gonna go in and get them? You are. In a tuxedo and Walmart? So we have to stop at the store while I'm sitting there in a, in a, in a suit look, looking like uh, royalty. I, I stand out like a diamond in a goat's ass. Burning through the aisles, looking, 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 and I finally find everything that I need. To, stuff it all up in my arms and I head to the checkout counter. Uh, yeah, I'm less than happy. Went up, waited for three or four mutants in front of me to get their stuff. Uh, got my products paid for, got back in the car and it's destination, Rose Garden. It was time to walk my daughter down the aisle. I looked good, meaning we looked good together as a team. My heart was racing through my chest the whole entire time uh, when I was waiting for Alyssa to, to show up with Mark as she was being walked down the aisle. And all of a sudden, like, my knees just started to turn to jello when I did see her. All of a sudden, it just, like, hit me like a ton of bricks. I'm getting married! <laughs> wedding was great. Very short and to the point. It's like a wedding should be. Don't drag it out forever. I think that this is another example of if it's not about Darren, Darren's not interested. No, I thought Mark did real well. He didn't lose a daughter. He gained a son-in-law. And we all love Josh. He, can't, he, he, he needs to borrow a branch from my tree, where it's, uh, you don't have to bogart the microphone. You, you don't have to hog the camera. Um, you, can, you can share in other people's joy. Love is not breathlessness. It is not excitement. It is not the desire to mate every second minute of the day. My dad's a really tough person to be around and he makes every situation about 10 times worse than it needs to be. It is not lying awake at night imagining that he is kissing every cranny of your body. What? Did y'all catch that one I did? Did you catch that? Is it rock? Is it? Is it, is it the best one? Yeah. said it was the best one. Well, I'm a natural entertainer, and I just try not to upstage everybody. You know, I try to keep it cool so everybody can have their moment in the limelight. I'm, I'm just thrilled. 
that they're married. I, I couldn't ask for a, a better thing to happen to a father. Starting a family of his own, setting out on the greatest adventure of his life with his new bride, Alyssa. I feel great. It's the stress is gone. Everything's great. So I'm I'm stoked. I'm in love. Hey, uh, the 71 just got back from Portland. Oh, it did? Yeah. I think I would like to get everybody down here right away and we need to figure out where we're at. So the 71 Cuda just showed up from uh, the Dipper up in Portland. We've been waiting all summer for it to get here. It doesn't look like any more metals removed from it, which is a good thing, uh, but we can see everything now. I'm surprised the metal's still pretty dense. When we got the 71 Cuda back, the 446 barrel from American Metal Cleaning up in Portland, uh, I, was, I was pleasantly surprised that all of the metal it went in the vat with, it came back out with. It's a little thin up there, a little bit. From a, from a structural standpoint, it was no worse than I thought it was when we first took the car on. Some areas are better than others, so. So we're standing inside there assessing the condition of the car. I'm there, Royal's there, Josh is there. Guess who's not there? Have you seen Darren at all? Has Darren called you? Has Darren called you? No, no. Exactly. This is one of the things that I just hate about him. He, he says he's going to be there. He's not there. He doesn't care. He has, puts no importance on anybody's stuff but his own. I figured you'd talk to him. No, he just doesn't return phone calls. That's his problem. So I'm searching around for Darren. The guys are searching around for Darren. We don't see him anywhere. We look out front, his car's there. Huh, that's weird. I try calling him, no answer, but that's typical for Darren. One of the guys on the camera crew says, hey, isn't that Darren over there? I look up and he's at the garage sale next door. Is that actually him over there? Yeah. Hey, Darren. Didn't mean to trouble you, but we're starting to work on a car over there, so I was wondering. Probably looking for some kind of a rolled over, kicked in uh, toy from 1984 for a penny for one of his grandkids. How you doing, man? So does the fact that we need to get some cars done today mean anything to you? Does it matter to you at all? Yeah. Just go to work. What I want to know is if we can save any of this frame rail, and if so, where we're going to splice it at. Like right there, I think, there forward, I could fix that. And when you have a car that's this bad, it's just imperative that you save as many pieces of the original metal as humanly possible. But I think we can save the outer one. And then we could put the nice new quarter right up against it and use it as a form to fit the quarter to. And this roof is just gonna be, this is just gonna be heat shrink, dolly and hammer. Heat shrink, dolly and hammer. You know, after the car's been back now and I've had a little bit of a chance to look it over very carefully with good lighting and crawl around it, it's obvious to me that the car is a little bit better than I thought it was when I started. I was worried that when it came back, it would be worse. So I had put in my mind a lot worse of an imagination of how it was going to come back. But now that it's actually here and all the paint's off of it, it's better than I had hoped. Did you find anything good in the car left? Truthfully. Well, this is going to be a very difficult car to repair. This car's got more wrinkles than a Sharpay. There's not gonna be anything left of the car that's original. You thought when it came back from the Dipper that all the metal would actually be straight no. again, too. I honestly think Darren is trying to be a pain in the ass. Jeez, what a piece of junk. It's not too late to not start. I think he does know that the car is actually gonna turn out very well. I think that Darren is equally as happy as I am about the project. The car will look great, but what expense, not only mentally or physically, but what is it gonna do to the people? that are working on the car. That's what I'm worried about. Anything's possible. Is the glass half empty or is the glass half full? Depends on how you look at it and how hard you're willing to make it work. The fact is, this car is very restorable. And yeah, it's a lot of time and a lot of money, but we're going to do it. That's what we get paid to do. You may not like it, but that's what we get paid to do. Just yet, 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 yet. That looks mental, man. Can I leave a bruise on your forehead? That's coming out of somebody's yeah, cool. What's going to be left when we're done taking the bat off? Well, the same pieces we talked about in the meeting. 
So now that we got the 71 CUDA back from the dipper and we have an exact plan on what sheet metal's getting replaced and what one's getting repaired, we can cut the old damaged sheet metal off of it, mount it up on the frame rack, and start making our pulls in preparation for the new sheet metal. This quarter has to be replaced. So I wanna start working on drilling out the factory spot welds right here. Don't do, drill through the lock pillar. Why don't we wanna drill through the lock pillar? I thought you needed to go through both of them when you did it. The pilot hole, you can drill through it. You don't wanna drill through it with the spot weld bit. So once you do that, these are really easy to break, these spot weld bits. Uh -huh. I don't want them broken. See, now, like, right there is through the outer skin, but not through that inner one yet. That's a great point to stop at. You know, I'm pretty much just going off of what Mark asked me to do and learning as I go. It may be a little bit easier if we cut this. Um, I'll tell you what we're going to use for that. So one of the things that I tried to do this year is to be able to increase production at the shop, and that meant we needed a plasma cutter. Uh, in the past, when we go to remove a panel, we either use a torch, which causes a lot of heat and can warp panels that you don't want to warp, uh, or we would use like a cutoff wheel or a sawzall. Uh, in this case, we stepped up and we bought the uh, new Miller plasma cutter, and it's a phenomenal tool. What's cool about this one? You can change the ends. I can put a 240 on here, and I think I'd like oh, to use cool. the higher voltage. So bring me over the big 240 extension cord. Royal, am I gonna be in your way? No. Now you definitely look like the guy from the fly. Help me! Can I go ahead and cut that weld there to get this off? What do you need, brother? Can I cut that weld to get this off of here? You gonna pull this off? Yeah, we're gonna replace this apron section. Okay, so I need to cut that weld and drill these spot welds. Exactly. I'm not a body man, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a brake and suspension and steering guy. I'm trying to help them get the car apart so they can start to do what they need to do on the body to get it going back together. So now we can actually rock and roll on these cars, cut the panels off in one shot, be done and ready to start assembling new pieces and parts on them instead of spending half a day cutting them apart. I think it's going really well today. We're making a lot of progress on it. Just took a few minutes to get the quarter off with the new equipment. So uh, we're making a lot of ground up fast. We should have both quarters, wheelhouses, and front aprons off there in an hour or so. What about just a straight cut from? As if you can cut right on it, it, that's fine, yeah. I think I want to take it loose from the center structure. I think I saved this in this. Once they're off, they're not that bad. I could dolly these out. Honestly, is that that bad? I think he's very delusional on what he's gonna repair and what he's gonna replace. Darren, since we had this car, says we ought to just take the numbers out of it and rebody it. What he doesn't understand is that's against the law. Now, he'll say that's not what he wants. He'll say, well, just replace every panel you're taking off. The problem with that is, when you're done, if every piece of sheet metal is new, you might as well have rebodied it. What's the difference? Once you cut it out, what difference does it make if it's off this car or another car? This is the original upper deck panel. It don't make, it's not gonna make any difference when it's Then why done. don't we just cut the numbers out of it and put it in the nice that's, 71 out back? That's what I wonder. Why don't we do that's that? That's a rebody. You butcher. No, that's a, this is never. Everybody need a pound of bacon, go see Darren, because he's our local butcher. I know I can fix the metal. I have the talent and the ability to fix some of the metal, and I'm going to fix some of the metal. So when I'm done, I want to retain as much of the original sheet metal as possible. This panel is good, and it started life in 1971 is, right there, and that's no, where it's gonna end its life no, is right there. You don't like it? Go somewhere else. That's what I do. I listen to the both of them, but sometimes I think that they should just both shut up and try to work together on getting some stuff done. Everybody just needs to have a little faith. You know, I'm pretty much in the zone, just doing my own thing. And I take a break for a second and look up. It's like the 4th of July coming right at my face. If I wouldn't have had these on, I would have been missing an eye right now. They don't care about anybody else as long as they're not getting sparked. Jackass. Yashid, 70 Dodge Challenger factory sunroof. Give me the code, the alphanumeric code. I don't know exactly why Mark decides to start quizzing me right now about the Challengers whenever I got 2,000 things to do and he just wants me to stop. Give me the numeric oh, code. I don't know the sunroof. I don't know the sunroof. Mark's on some kind of binge right now where I have to know everything about Challengers. Mark's on Josh about the Challengers because we're getting a new Challenger and Josh doesn't know about it yet. I, I don't understand. 
It's driving Josh crazy. 70 Challenger, rubber bumpers, front. Are you asking the VIN? I'm asking for the alphanumeric option code. There's no rubber bump on a 70 Challenger, okay? It was, it was all steel. It's only available in 71. Oh, okay. This is like one-on-one -on -one time that we've never had. Can I leave a shoe print? No. Can I leave a handprint? Can hand I leave print? a bruise on your forehead? Can I leave a handprint on your face? Something's gonna fall here. Oh my God, you're animals. Hang on, Darren. Come on. What's the problem there, I Nancy? Bought you guys nice gloves. I bought you nice gloves. I bought you a lot of nice stuff. I bought you a lot of good stuff, man. <laughs> what the hell's the matter with you? Here, watch. Well, Why you are guys you are rock rock. You're going to get hurt moving a little Here, piece of gonna, metal. I bought you all the protective. If you're looking for a parts <laughs> replacement, three. that's coming out of somebody's <laughs> check. Cool. I don't mind that the guys like to have fun and play grab ass, but throwing a piece of metal inside of a shop's a really stupid idea. Hitting my brand new toolbox is even a stupider idea, and it's going to get their faces kicked inside out. <gasps> you just Let's hit my out. toolbox. It matches the other side. Get your wallet out. Put it in the safe pile and don't throw it. You got it, boss. So I think today was actually pretty productive. Um, I mean, in fact, we got the whole back half of the car off, so that's that's a pretty good motion. Mark left me alone. I just put my uh, Mark muffs on, and so I couldn't hear him, and just did what I needed to do. I'm always happy when we get something done. The basic structure of the unibody is still intact. We'll have some frame rail replacement, quarter panels, outer wheelhouses. But a good portion of this car is going to be the original sheet metal. We're just going to have to take it off so we can access it, repair it, put it back together. I'm actually more hopeful. Darren just seems extremely pessimistic about the whole entire thing. Well, I don't think it's too late to call 800 your scrap and just have them come pick up the whole thing right now before we put any more time and money into it. We just hate him. Not prepared for this. You have three foot tall wings on the back, airfoil noses. How the hell did he get a Challenger? So the second Josh shows up, I immediately put him to work on studying the 71 Dodge Challenger factory shaker car. I guess I'm on a research mission now. I don't know exactly why Mark sent me out here this morning. And he just said, I want you to go outside and that white 71 Challenger that we have out back, I want you to study it, take note of every single little thing that is cool personally to me about that Challenger. I think that it's important for Josh to know everything there is to know about this car and the cars that are made around it. If he doesn't know them, he can't fix them. If he doesn't understand them, he can't make them. That's just the way it is. All white interior, wow. That's insane. Rally dash. To have everything packed in the four circles. You have your, your gauges for your fuel, uh, your alternator, the temperature, and uh, the oil pressure, and clock. You know, this is a great subject for Josh to go out and study. It's got a lot of factory really cool options, everything from the, the bulge hood, which is actually standard on the RT, to the rally dash, to the rear spoiler optional, the flip top gas cap. Rally dash, all circular gauges. And the flip top gas cap, oh, whoa, hello. <laughs> There's some hornets there. <laughs> you know, any car, of course, has a gas cap, but everything is still stylish down to the gas cap. Wah! Watch. Groovy flip top gas cap. It's freezing out here for one. I'm in shorts for two. I was not prepared for this. And that's probably why he wanted me to be out here. He needs to know these cars back and forth off of his memory. I don't want him looking at cue cards. So when things like the new Challenger show up, he can appreciate them for what they are and how they got to be. He wants to see me miserable. It doesn't help that I'm drinking cold coffee in the morning either. Where's Mark? Inside where it's warm. Okay, I can't move my fingers, so you know what, man? Of course, my concern always is when you send him out back, out of sight, out of mind, he gets sidetracked so easily. I just hope he's actually studying the car and not out back trying to play some kind of modern version of Star Wars or something. Is that a dead frog? It's a dead bird or something. <laughs> you guys see that? I get it. It's an awesome car. This thing is total muscle. 
all the way. It looks like a big old beefy marshmallow on steroids with black wheels. All right, I'm going inside, dude. It's too freaking cold out here. The Dodge Daytona is one of the coolest cars Chrysler ever built. It was their car to qualify at NASCAR. If you were gonna build a car and race at NASCAR back in 1969, you had to make at least 500 street versions of the car that you'd like to race at the track. Most companies, that deterred them from getting too far out there with uh, airfoils and wings, and but you get into a Charger Daytona and a Plymouth Superbird, you have three foot tall wings on the back, airfoil noses. They were an amazing testimony to how much a manufacturer believed in their product back in the day. So you have two left-hand headlight doors. Right. Hey, three stooges. Huh? Tom Partridge. Oh. Hey, hey, what's up, man? Hey. I'm Tom Partridge. I'm from Angola, New York. Nice, nice to, meet to meet you. you. Nice to meet you. Hi, how are you? I just wanted to come and see the shop and see, you know, what you guys thought of the car and say hello. So Tom, the owner of the Daytona, flew all the way out from New York to visit with us and share really the story of his life. I always loved the wing cars. You know, when I was a kid, I didn't know what they were. I just thought they were a big, cool car with a big wing. And I loved them so much that I was in this group with my dad called the Indian Guides. And we built Pinewood Derby cars and I had him actually make me a Pinewood Derby car with a big wing on the back. And then a few years ago, I was thumbing through the internet and typed in Project Daytona, and this Daytona came up. No motor, no interior, you know, but it's got the wing, it's got the rear window and the rear window trim, because I know those are, you know, extremely difficult, if not impossible to find. This was something I didn't want to lose. So the day Tom showed up, we all went out to the shop and walked around his car. Uh, acclimated ourselves with what he knew about it. I think he was very informed when the day was over, and I certainly know I was. What we're seeing here is somebody's knocked that back out again. Oh, okay. This is all, at one point, was caved down. To get this quarter panel to buckle up like this and cause that, right. that frame rail would have been destroyed. After coming out here, seeing the awesome facility that's here at the shop, everything that they have, the, the, the way the, the guys joke and work together, all the guys are great. Josh, Royal, Darren, a little sketchy about him. But, you know, the expertise, the knowledge, just in casual conversation, it's just amazing to me. So I, I'm just looking forward to the work and the expertise that Marks has to do this car for me. I'm excited. You know, we're going to make his dream come true, and it's going to make my dream come true as well. It's not very often where you get to work on a real Daytona Charger. It's great to be part of such a uh, neat project, be able to help somebody realize a childhood dream. And I guess in some ways, you know, I, I think people will come up later and they say, well, you're, you're the dream man, you know, you should, your license plate should read uh, the dream maker or something. So you can drive down the road and dream maker, you know, like that. Um, yeah, I make dreams come true. It's a huge surprise for Josh. Dude, I need your help. This Challenger's gonna look sick. No, I'm just pretty much hating everybody. No, you're not gonna drive it. So it'd be nice if we could like put them in a box and then put that box somewhere in market 71 CUDA six barrel. There should be something around here in the way of boxes. Won't you brainless monkeys do that? And I'll work on something that requires a mind. You're talking to me. Today we got to take the rest of the pieces off the 71 CUDA so we can get it up on the frame rack and start straightening the remaining portions of the unibody. Nice job missing that weld, by the way. Oh, I never touched that. Who did the pilot holes on these? I never touched them. Okay, I didn't touch them and you didn't touch them. Would that be Royal or Darren? I don't know. So the thing that's always most amusing to me is when something goes wrong and nobody did it. So in the case of the spot weld that is missed by a half of an inch, Royal didn't do it, and Josh didn't do it, and Darren didn't do it. Whoever it is, they missed the actual spot weld. Just as humans, you know, just as a, a contribution to humanity, they're not, they're, they're a negative sign in front of humanity. He missed every one of the spot welds. I mean, do you know how difficult it is once that's missed? To get that off of there? Do they make that shirt in any size besides whale? I have to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a big shirt, so what? You smell good today too, man. I do? Yeah. Thanks, man. Hold, hold it. Go ahead, take it off there. Thank you. Yeah, Buddy? Buddy? Here you go, hold on. Whoa! Whoa. What the hell just happened? Hello. What is that? What, I gotta take a minute here. Because honestly, I, it's, it blows my mind. That's screaming. Do that? What are you gonna do? Right the box? upper yeah. door hinge. 
No, I'm just pretty much hating everybody. Yeah. I need to get those frame rails out of there. So, uh, should we just lift it up on the forklift? It's not a bad idea. It's the first intelligent thing you've said all day, actually. Drilling out factory spot welds and working on the cars is pretty easy when it's a horizontal panel or a vertical panel, but when it's on the bottom of the car, I'm not gonna lay underneath there and drop a bunch of metal shavings in my eyes. So I'm gonna raise it up in the air with the forklift so I have access to it. I asked him specifically, turn the car sideways, please, so that I can come in from the side and lift it up in the air. Is that how I said I wanted it? I come in, and not only is it not sideways, it's in the most difficult way in the world to try to lift it, which is lengthwise front to back. I didn't have it quite the way he wanted it when he came into the room with the forklift. Because we try to filter out what is not important and listen to what may be important, because he says so much. There you go. Hey, give him a banana. I'm sorry, but just today I didn't take my anti-lunatic pills. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to reverse the process that the factory did when they installed all this sheet metal. I want to take it back off in the same fashion. Instead of welding it into place, I'm drilling out the spot welds that they welded it into place with. So I have to reveal all the spot welds so that I can drill a pilot hole into them, drill the actual spot weld out, and then if you get all of them out that hold it to the body of the car, you can take that frame rail out or apron or what have you. Why don't you go ahead and get the rest of the nuts and stuff off okay. and work on that, and I'm gonna have Tweedledum hold the light for me here. Well, it's not here. There's just a lot of spot welds. And hold it all in the place. It's just a lot of work, monotonous work. Nobody wants to do that kind of work. All these little Nortons that run around saying how great a restoration people they are. They don't do stuff like this. Most of them just run around at the shows talking about how brilliant they are. You give me one of these cars, I'll, I'll call a fraud every really? single. Really? Well, I've every hit it every time. <laughs> nice hook on your nose. Just yep, 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 yep. Where is he? Oh, no. I don't know where Mark's at, so actually things are pretty peaceful around here right now. There you are. Dude, I need your help. What? I need your help. Is the shop burning down or what? No, I, I no. I just oh, need your I help. Guess I Mark's gotta on go. me. Mark's drilling me the about world's learning. In, the world's in danger. I gotta go. All right, we'll see you later. Obviously, Bye. I'm taking up your time. I'm coming hey, to you buddy. <laughs> for some help, dude. Mark is just riding my ass about learning everything about the challengers, everything about the wheelbase, the paint, everything. Like I need to learn this stuff, and I mean, I know you have a challenger all back. It's just okay. been sitting there, but I mean, where I did. Would you like to, where would you like to start? Well, I, I, I don't know. The basics? Man. The well, basics. yeah, let's just teach me the foundation of it. Like, I just, just start from the ground up. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm pretty good authority on Dodge Challenge. It's easy just to make mistakes and assume things on like RT this or RT that or what was standard, what was not standard. So it's easy to make a mistake. So I don't, I'm no expert, but I, I do know a lot. Here we got a 70 Challenger RT. Get them three ways, as, if you had an RT, get them three ways as far as the stripe's concerned. Stripe elite, stripe on the butt, it's called the bumblebee, or a stripe down the side. So what was the first the first stripe? Stripe delete, no stripe. Okay. Now if I'm not mistaken, when this design first came out about their burst light being in between the two taillights, Chrysler, Mopar, however you want to say it, had to go and petition or ask the government for permission to do this because it's never been done before. To put their burst light in the middle between the two taillights, and they must have okayed it because that's how they made them. Oh wow. So if you had a TA Challenger, what kind of a spoiler did you have? An all black? Well, it'd be one like this. Did not have, just flat, sit flat on the trunk. Did not have any pedestals where it's set up on like an RT Challenger. It was called a ducktail spoiler. Okay, and that was only on a, a 70 TA? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna give you a test, okay? You're gonna give me a test? Yes. How all do you right. tell a base Challenger or a non-RT Challenger from an RT Challenger? Um, well, it would say RT on the side. Am I correct? You wonder if the badges were gone or the stripes were gone. Um, What's the one thing that's going to tell you what this car is? What it is? The VIN. VIN number. Good, good, good. Okay, just a, a 318, a six cylinder Challenger is going to be a JH23. Josh will be very excited to see the new Dodge Challenger. You know, to compare the new one with the old one, he's got a good foundation. 
and taking a look at the differences and the similarities of the new versus the old Dodge Challenger. I think he's a little overwhelmed. No, you're not gonna drive he might it. Might drool over himself and everything. How the hell did he get a Challenger? I had always envisioned the Challenger with tinted windows. Uh, they just give it an ominous look. It completes the lines of a car. So since the Challenger showed up before the guys did, I uh, made a quick phone call over to Trifer to see if there was any way they could sneak it in. And they said, yes, bring it over right now. We'll do it. How you doing, Mark? Good, how are you? Good. Good. My name's Tristan. Uh, me and my wife, Jen, own Trifer Glass and Tin. We do a little bit of everything. Uh, obviously, window tinting, auto glass. Performance lighting and headlight restoration. I'm just not sure exactly. I mean, I'd okay. like to be as pitch black as humanly possible, but. We can do that. State of Oregon, the legal limit is 35%. Dad, I don't care if they're too dark, and write me a ticket, right? I mean, the important thing isn't being able to see where you're going. It's more important of how cool you look getting there. I say we do the 5%. Let's okay. get it on, man. All right. All right. I'll pull it around and get started. Five all the way around. My name is Scott Young, and everyone calls me Tex. I've personally been tinting windows for about 22 years. This Challenger's gonna look sick when we finish tinting the windows. When we pull the car in, we wipe down the windows to make sure the windows are clean. So the glass isn't clean, and you apply the film to the window, then all that dirt is gonna show. And we're gonna measure the window and see how much film that we need. We're gonna apply that piece of film to the outside of the vehicle. We're gonna cut out our patterns using that. The window is a template. We're going to cut a perfect pattern. Then we're going to spray a soapy water with just the right amount of soap in it. We use the soapy water to float the film up into position. We're going to apply that piece of film to the inside of the vehicle. We're going to squeegee out the majority of the moisture of the water. We apply heat to make the film have the same curve as the glass that we're applying the film to, to conform that perfect pattern to that window specifically. Before any car rolls out of here, I walk around the whole car, make sure that it's absolutely perfect. Nobody lets anything leave the shop until it's done right. That end result has to be perfection. Nice shot, kid. You guys are good to go. When the car rolled around front after having the windows smoked out in it, it was show-stopping, breathtaking. That looks mental, man. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that looks great. Wow. It makes it look like twice as mean as it was before. Isn't that something? Unbelievable. Once again, it's another great example of why you have to have good vendors and good suppliers to be able to do a great job. It just is. I mean, anybody that's ever been in this business knows they can't do it all by themselves. Sweet thank you to, uh, to the guys over at Trifer. They, they just rock, man. So once the windows were done at Trifer, I made a quick phone call over to the guys and let them know to be waiting outside for me. When I pull up, I want them to see this thing coming around the corner. Well. I hear that Mark informed Darren and Royal that he wanted all of us to be waiting out here for him when he arrives. How long have we been waiting? He said, be waiting outside, and I said, waiting for a while. He said, just be waiting. For what? I don't know. Uh, he just said, be outside waiting, and I'll be there soon. I don't know what we're doing outside. Mark called while I go on the phone, in a big tizzy, and said, hey, I want you guys to wait outside the shop for me. We're out here waiting on Mark. He went to pick up the Challenger from the uh, having the windows tinted. Oh, I forgot he's always, I want this guy, he's gonna bring a challenger, show it to Josh. Poor Josh, uh, Mark's been riding him for a week and a half, just, you know, really grilling him about learning about these cars. This past week getting along with Mark's been, I mean, it's been good, but it's been really tough because he's so adamant on me 
learning about challengers. Josh is trying to learn them. I, I think he's a little overwhelmed. Well, I think Josh would be just like a little child in a candy store. He'd probably drool over himself and everything. That's a huge surprise for Josh. We're going on what? Everything for himself. 20 minutes now. Yep, I have had enough. So Royal Darren and I are sitting down just talking, and all of a sudden we hear a loud engine revving up. I don't know. You're some idiot. Oh, he's got a customer. And we get up to see what it is, and it's a brand new SRT8 Challenger, and it pulls right in, right in front of us. Nice car. I like the license plate frames, too. Pretty. Oh my gosh. What the hell are you doing, You know what dude? I'm talking about, fool? That's what I've been talking about. I didn't know. Is that yours? No way. That's yeah. yours. Well, this is it's yours? Ours? This is ours? It's, it's mine. It's ours? Sick. Mine. It's crazy. How the hell did he get a Challenger? When Josh first saw the Challenger, he was pretty excited, just walking around it and looking at it. And, and then and I began to see that the homework I had him doing uh, in the last few weeks was beginning to pay off. Damn, man. Do you see any similarity? Wow. That's what I'm teasing it, the business. It's, it's old, but it's modified new. He was making notice of things that he would have walked right past before if he didn't know that those were factory options. And here we are with a car 40 years later with all those factory options on it. I can definitely see why Mark was pounding me so hard about learning about the Challengers now. I mean, the, the older Challenger and then the newer Challenger. I mean, they, they both have so many similarities. Oh, that's awesome. Looks almost completely identical. They got the single reverse light. They got the rally dash. Yeah, it's got it's got all the circles right in the rally dash, just like the original. It's got a sunroof, you know, which was optional back then. It's got the bulge hood. It's got the Hemi emblems on the hood. It's got the emblem right there too. Uh, it's got the ducktail spoiler. It's got the same style line. The flip top gas cap. No bees nest in this one. Yeah, it's good. This thing is awesome. Now that Josh has kind of acclimated himself with the car a little bit, it's already starting. The can I, can I, yeah, can I please, can I please, can I please, can I please? Watch you let him take it for a so spin. So here's the deal. He's never going to drive it. Here's the deal. No, you're not going to drive it. You're too stupid. You're too tall. You're weird. You have a strange body, right? Darren, tell everybody about what a great week we had at Graveyard Cars. We got the remains of the Cuda back from the Dipper. It's in better shape than I thought it would be. I think it came out pretty darn good, as good as I thought it was gonna. I know you guys were pessimistic, but I think still it, are pessimistic. Well, actually. that's because that's how you are. But anyway, we got the panels cut off. We got some panels cut off. Got it more squared up and everything. It looks a lot better than it did. Very nice. And what kind of a car did we get from New York City? Actually, a, from Angola, New York. We got a '69 Dodge Daytona Charger. Awesome car. Beautiful how many of those car. did they build? It's a shade over 500. I think 503 is the right answer. And Alyssa got married. That's great. And you gained, gained a, a daughter. You know, gained gained a, a son in law. A son in law. He's too tall. Josh learned a lot about the 1970 and 71 Dodge Challenger, which I have to give kudos to you. I'd like to pay you a compliment, by the way. You did a phenomenal job of helping me educate Josh. He was well, able you. to pick up things like the flip top gas cap, notice the bulge hood, he noticed the rally dash, the instrumentation, the interior still has a hint of the original one in it. The outside's almost a twin to it. It's, not, it's, it's just a good job of, of designing a car. I mean, honestly. It's a very good job. Yeah, yeah it, drives, sure. it drives real nice, has a lot of power, handles very well. Good job, Chrysler. I've never let you drive it. That you know of.